Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to be solving problem 16, 116, okay? It says, the disk has an angular acceleration alpha equals to 8 radians per second square and an angular velocity omega equal to 3 radians per second at the instant shown. If it doesn't slip at A, determine the acceleration of point B. Alright, so what we have over here, we got this disk that it has uh, an angular acceleration and an angular velocity rotating counterclockwise and we want to determine basically what's the acceleration at this point b okay so as always the first thing i would like to do in this problem is just write out our givens okay so we starting with alpha being equal to eight radians per second square and i'm also giving omega which is the angular velocity equal to three radians Per second okay so these are my two main givens also we have some geometrical like givens over here in the figure but we're not gonna bother with those now uh, since we're in chapter 16 what we're going to do is basically utilize these two equations one one equation is basically the acceleration at um, of an object given the angular acceleration and the radius of this uh, it's usually by gears, disc, and all the type of objects that are circular shape. Now, we also have the relative acceleration we can find equation that we can utilize in order to find our point B. However, we don't know the acceleration at point C, neither the acceleration at point A yet. So what we can do is find the acceleration at a point that we know. In this case, the point that I'm going to utilize, well, is the acceleration of the object. And the acceleration of the object is basically the acceleration of this center point that I'm going to call O, okay? So, the acceleration at that point O has to be equal to the angular acceleration times the radius of this disk. So, we got 8 multiplied by, well, the radius is equal to 0 0.5, that is given in the figure, okay? And if we do this, my acceleration will be four radians, I'm sorry, four meters per second square, okay? Now, what will be the direction? Well, if we have a disc rotating this way, we will expect our disc to be moving towards the left. Therefore, I'm going to just add up a narrow going towards our left side, okay? Now, we have the acceleration of this point. Now, we can utilize our relative acceleration equation in order to find our point B. And if we do that, well, we'll have the acceleration of B will be equal to the acceleration of my point O plus the angular velocity cross product with the distance of B relative to O minus the angular velocity squared multiplied by the distance B relative to point O, okay? So this will be our main equation. Let's just go ahead and start and see how we solve this problem, then we will have the acceleration at B will be equal to the acceleration of O. Well, we have that is four meters per second squared going to the left. And I'm going to do that by displaying negative four in the I direction, okay? To displace this left in the horizontal component. And then we have plus the angular acceleration so the angular acceleration, it's given to us as eight radians per second. So we got eight, and this is in the k direction, okay? Cross product with the distance of b relative to o, okay? So the distance is going to be the distance from here to here. Therefore, the x component is going to be this segment over here, and that segment is going to be our total radius multiplied by the sine of 45 degrees, okay? And this is in the i direction. And then we'll have minus, and minus because we're going down this amount, right? We have a minus 0 0.5 multiplied by the cosine of 45 degrees. This is in the j direction. Then we have minus the omega square, which is three square, multiplied by this same distance. So what I'm going to do is copy this and put it in here we're multiplying by this 
okay so we're going to try to simplify this further we got negative 4 in the i direction plus then we're going to multiply a times 0 0.5 sine 45 and we have the, the cross product between k and i that will give me a j okay a positive j so we're gonna utilize our calculator so one second here we're going to multiply that a multiply by 0 0.5 sine of 45 and that will give me a total of 2.83 if I run into two decimal places in the j direction then we will have the a k multi cross product by this so we're multiplying the numbers and when we do the cross product between j and k that will give me a negative however we have initially a negative number therefore it becomes positive so we got positive and the value is the same 2.83 in the i direction now okay then we have minus and we're going to multiply this 3 squared times this 0 0.5 sine of 45 and that will give me a total of 3.18 and this will be in the same direction in the i direction and similarly but positive due to the minus times minus will end up having a 3.18 in the j direction okay so now what we have we're going to add i components with it with its similars so we're going to end up having that the acceleration at b is going to be negative 4.35 in the i direction plus 6.01 in the j direction okay so we found the acceleration in the cartesian form so the only thing that we're missing is actually the units let's not forget about that so the units should be in meters per second square if they want us to find the magnitude of this acceleration then we will say that the magnitude will be the square root of the x component negative 4.35 square plus the y component 0 6.01 square and when we plug that into our calculator that'll give me a total of 7.42 meters per second square However, when we do the magnitude of a vector, we also want to know the direction. So the direction of this acceleration is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of the y component, 6.01, divided by the x component, negative 4.35. And this will give me a total of 54 point one if we round it up and this is in degrees okay now the calculator gave me a negative value what does this actually mean so the way that i like to basically look at this angle is that first i like drawing kind of like a circle right to figure it out then we have our x and y vectors uh cartesian form uh, cartesian directions right now we know that we have a positive y value so we're gonna end up having a positive value y value and we have a negative x value right so going towards the left our acceleration should look something like this and the angle we just found is the angle from here to here okay this is theta so instead of representing this by negative 54.1 it's better represented if we place if we do this representation of the angle knowing that it's from the horizontal but however from the negative side of our horizontal axis up 54.1 degrees okay so we just found our acceleration in cartesian form our magnitude of this acceleration and the direction of this acceleration so I hope you guys like this video, please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.